Hello, welcome for welcome to the part three discussion on project for the OS course. This is a continuation of what we did. It's a short video to expose you to a new API which you could use to find out which core your process is running on. Now take for example in the previous uh, discussion we talked about how to make your process or thread to run on a particular core of your choice. Now first of all you should know how do I find out how many cores are there or how many CPUs are there. When I say when you have core or CPU is a, a synonym which actually refers to a set of registers that it has got, it has got and then it has got its own uh, internal caches L1, L2 caches and then they can actually execute a piece of code or a thread independent of other CPUs in the system and we also say SMP which is a symmetric multiprocessors wherein each of the CPUs are identical okay symmetric it is symmetric metric multiprocessor system now it says that it multiple processors are there but they are all symmetric that means each of the CPUs or core I may call it a CPU or a core they are identical and most of the time you will find them running at the same clock speed. There may be some cases where you may have a high efficient core and then a small core which runs at a lower rate and it consumes low power. But in general in a laptop environment or a server environment, you will have cores which are of same capacity, same capability and they all run with the same clock rate. That means it doesn't matter whether your core, a particular thread is running on a CPU core 0 or CPU core 1 or 2 or 3, they all run at the same speed and they most of them will have a identical uh, caches L1, L2 caches which takes the data or a code from the main memory into the CPU and they can actually make use of that whatever they copies they have to execute your program. Now the question is how do we set the particular affinity or CPU affinity that we have already seen that there is a SCED affinity, CPU affinity function which is used earlier to give a particular core for a particular thread. So suppose if I want to say that I want this affinity to be set okay, um, of a process. Now the first parameter says 0 means this executing process, whichever is executing this code, we refer to that particular process to use a particular core. Now, we already saw that this API CPU set sets the value into the core ID variable which is of type CPU set T. This is an internal data type which is given within the library. Now the question is if I give a 1 here what does it mean? It actually means that it is going to be running on CPU core 1. Okay. And if I am saying 2, it means that I am going to use a CPU or a core 2. Now, how do I know whether it is really running on that or not? So, we need some way of finding out whatever I am doing by setting the particular thread to run on a core, is it actually doing it or not? Now, who is going to do the operating system is going to do and then it is going to make sure that whenever your thread, whichever thread you have created, when they are ready to run, it is making sure that it runs on the core you wanted it to be run on. Now, if I say that I want my process, this executing process, I am creating multiple threads and then I am saying that each of the threads, I am going to associate them with a different cores. Then all of them should run on different cores. Now, how do I know whether it is really happening or not? That's what we are going to see in this video. How to check whether what I have set is really happening or not. So, I hope this is clear when I pass uh, one here and I am setting that value into this core id variable and then I am passing it here to tell this function set affinity function to take the value that I have passed and then put it on that particular core. That means whenever this process is becoming ready it should be run on that core. If it is busy it will wait for that core to be available then it will make this process to run on the core. Now I am sure that it is really running on it. So there is an API provided by the same library that we are using. 
which is given here okay uh, my intent of this particular um, video is to explain what is this get cpu does what does it do get cpu is a, a api to find out whatever process i am running that whichever process is calling this function where is it running on is it running on core 0 or core 1 or whatever code i have so what do i pass it i pass a pointer pointed to of pointed to a type unsigned int now what is this nullable this is a extension provided to this language c programming language in the later versions of the c to say that this pointer variable that means this pointer argument can be a null also so i can actually pass a null value then this function is supposed to handle that see most of the time what happens is the pointer is supposed to be non null value i you, 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 no you are not actually supposed to pass a null as a pointer because null pointer doesn't point anything so anything to you are not supposed to access any pointer which is pointing at null value because it is going to create a segmentation fault or a illegal memory access is going to happen but some apis may say that i am okay to receive null as a pointer i will check it and then accordingly i take action so this api is meant for that so it is saying that nullable this pointer can be made as null but in our case i am not going to pass a null i am going to pass an address of a variable of type unsigned int to get the cpu on which this particular core is running on is written into suppose if i am calling this function while this function is being executed or this particular thread which is calling this function is running on a core 2 core number 2 then the cpu variable which I am passing as a pointer will be set as 2. So when I come out of this function, this particular variable CPU will have a value 2. Now, what is this node? This node is for an another mechanism uh, purpose. Um, there is uh, called uh, no, no, uniform memory, okay, NUMA and other memory structures are there. We are not going into the details of that right now in this discussion. So you can ignore it. But since this API has the node variable also, parameter also i am just mentioning it here actually it is like you to have a value of zero okay based on the setup of the white of memory you are using so we we'll, let us not go into the details of that we are only interested in knowing which cpu my particular process is running on i want to know that okay now i mentioned that for a particular thread with a child number i am creating a thread with the different child numbers and if i get a child number one i want it to run on core one that's why i passed the one and the child number 2 should run on 2, core 2 and core 3. Now, what is the guarantee that I really have this many cores in my CPU, okay, in my system? So, there is a function which you can use it and uh, API command ls CPU, okay. So, I am not going to show all the details of my CPU. Only thing what I am going to show you here is, it says that I have a CPU list of 0 to 7. I have 8 CPUs that means actually it's a multiple inside a CPU multiple threads can be there so it has a two copies of you no know, register set inside in a core so if I have a one core within that CPU 0 CPU 1 is there another core CPU 2 and 3 or uh, always you uh, know it will be 0 1 2 3 then 3 4 no 4 5 something like that so I have 0 to 7 CPUs in my system that means the valid number that I can pass as a core ID, I can set it up to 0 to 7. If I pass 8, it is going to give me a problem. Now, after setting this, each thread will come and then it will either get into this or this or this. Now, after I set the affinity, I immediately check whether it is really running on that or not. So, what do I do? Get CPU, I pass a pointer that variable that I have declared here, CPU num and node num, unsigned int because you are supposed to pass an unsigned integer, pointed to an unsigned integer. So I am create, I am passing those parameters as a pointers to those variable. I am not passing a null value here because I want this uh, get CPU to give me the CPU on which this particular API is being run on. That means this thread is running on. So I, pr no, I print the child number as well as the core ID or a CPU ID. Maybe I can call it as a CPU ID, okay, um, on which CPU it is running. Now, let us just run this program where I am just asking it to run on cores 1, 2, 3 and then later on we will change it and check whether 
if any of these values from 0 to 7 is accepted and if I give anything outside of this, it is going to be rejected. So, or it is going to give me a runtime error. So, let me now execute this, uh, sorry, compile this program. I am making it as a uh, executable name as this. This is the file that we are uh, actually, I saved it or not. Uh, let me save it once. Okay. Now, I am compiling it with the LP thread because I am using thread creation, P thread calls. So, I have to use that library LP thread. Now, let me run this. You can see here, child number 3 is running on CPU ID 3. Child number 2, CPU 2 and child number 1 is running on CPU 1. So, I said that I have 0 to 7, 8 CPUs are there. So, let me check maybe this I will give a lowest CPU okay? and then I will set this up to highest CPU number. So, let me see whether this works or not. Okay. So, let us just compile it now. Let me run it. I am running it faster. I am not uh, doing any data processing here to just make sure that it is getting done faster. So, I ran it on, I wanted to run it on 0, 4, 0, 4, 2 and 4, 7. Now, if you see here, it actually CPU ID is printed as 2 when I am passing 2 and then child number 1 I am passing, it says CPU uh, ID 0. Okay. Now, let me just see whether what is happening here. See, child number is 1. I actually passed 0 here, okay. So, I got a 0 here, okay. There is nothing wrong. And then, when I am passing a child number 2, I wanted it to run on 2. So, that is happening properly. Child number 3, I wanted to run on. Child number, number 3 is running on core server. So, everything is perfectly happening. Whatever number I pass, that is the core it is running on. Now, let me see whether if I pass 8, will it accept or not? Because we saw that LS CPU had a valid CPUs only from 0 to 7, right? That means I cannot make it run on a CPU 8, which there is nothing like CPU 8 here. Because I have only maximum 8 cores. This CPU 8 is the ninth core, which is not in my system. So, let me try running this. Compilation will go through because compiler doesn't know what you are trying to do. Okay, it's it only makes sure that okay whether are you having proper syntax, syntax and semantically your program is correct or wrong, it will check. But it cannot find out whether what your intent is in this particular case and what is the number of CPU cores that this program is going to run on. When it is compiling, it doesn't even know whether it is going to be run on this core or maybe some other machine which which has got more cores. Okay, actually compiler doesn't bother about whether you no know, this runtime errors which can be caught cannot be caught by the compiler. Okay, it's, this comes out of it's not in the preview of compiler. Now let us see what happens when I run it. Now you see that it says that one of the argument it says invalid argument. It's not coming thrice. Okay, it has accepted other two parameters, but it it rejected this because I am telling the library to set this particular thread to run on a CPU 8, which is not even there in my system. So, it gives me an error. So, I hope this is clear to you how to make use of CPU, get CPU to find out which core your program is running on. So, this will be an added to, you know, you don't need to add, you know, uh, add any other inputs here. Whatever was done earlier is enough. Only thing is what you need to do is, um, you have to declare so two variables which are used in this uh, function and send into variables and then call this function and print the value okay that's all you need to do in when your program is running you can try first of all first run ls cpu to find out how many cores you have in your system then make sure that you don't give any value which is not within that cpu range then you can manipulate it you can even create more threads if suppose you have eight cpus then create eight threads and then run them all all in parallel nobody stops you from exploring things with this okay so let me go back to you know uh, the old values that i had which matches with the comment i had this is a normal mistake that we do comment will say something and what we do in the code will be different so let me just have this as a code 
which is finally run and compiled and run and you see that child number 3 runs on CPU ID and this is running perfectly fine. That's all I wanted to say. I hope this is this will be helpful for you to complete the project and explore many things and write machine learning programs or any of the other uh, data processing programs and make them run on multiple cores and get the benefit of having multiple cores in the system. Bye-bye.